Hi everyone, it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards and today I'm going to show you how to create this beautiful floral balloon project using our brand new Summer Flower Trio stamp and die set. We're going to be using a little bit of the summer foliage on here along with an embossing fold for the background and some of our beautiful new sequins and gems and of course lots of sparklicious glitter. So let's dive on in and I'm going to show you how to create these beautiful flowers first. If I hold this up to the camera, you'll be able to see how I've really built these up to look nice and 3D and I've added some little sequins into the middle and some jewels as well, just to give it that really pretty look. So I'm going to pop the finished card to one side and we will get started. So to start off, I'm going to take a piece of our Rose Quartz Luxury Pearl Paper. This is absolutely beautiful. It's a lovely high quality pearl paper. It's about 120 GSM and it's lovely for stamping your flowers onto. So I'm going to take that first. I'm going to take an anti-static bag and just dust over. What the anti-static bag is going to do is it's going to just get rid of any oils, residue or fingerprints that may be on the, on the paper and also any static as well. So pop that to one side. I've got my stamps here which I've already popped onto my acrylic block and if I come in really close on my stamps, my stamps are well well used as well I have to say. Can you see how one of the petals has got a tiny little piece of extra polymer on the top there? So I've popped those all facing the same way up and the reason for this is the dies also have a little notch in. So turn the dies over. Can you see how the dies have a little tiny notch out of the metal? It just helps you to line them up. So what we're going to do is stamp and emboss these first. So for this project, you're going to need four large, two medium and four small onto the rose quartz pearl paper. So I'm going to ink up my stamp and I'm using my WOW Clear Embossing Ink Pad, which is a really nice sticky ink pad. It is perfect for embossing with. It's a really good quality ink pad. It's the one that I use all the time. So I'm going to pop that to one side. I'm going to take my stamps in and my paper and I'm going to place that down in the middle and press. Now, of course, if you were at home, you can be a little bit more frugal than I'm being and you can really get the stamps nice and close together. But I just wanted to show you for lining them up. Um, so I've spaced them out a little bit more on mine, but normally I do do them a little bit tighter. Okay, so we're going to lift that off. I'm going to grab in a piece of scrap card. I personally tend to always put my cards in a box. So I'm using an envelope just as my piece of scrap paper today. I'm going to take some of the Wow Opaque Bright White Super Fine Embossing Powder and sprinkle that over the top. And you can see how that's clung to exactly where the stamped image is. We're going to pop any leftover powder back into the jar and then we're going to heat this up. So to heat it up, I'm going to take my little heat gun. This is a really quiet heat gun, <laughs> gun as well. So please do just bear with it. It just takes a little bit of a, a little while to get going. This isn't a hairdryer either, just if you're watching at home, it is a heat tool, so it's got a, a lot more heat to it and not quite as much blow. So there we go, we've got those flowers nicely heated up. Now what I like to do is I like to give them a couple of seconds, just so that embossing powder cools down a little bit before I pop my dies over the top. In preparation of putting my dies over, I'm going to take a little bit of scotch tape, and I'm going to just pull a couple of strips of the tape ready to place over the dies. Okay, and knowing that I did these, so these all faced up this way, the little extra point, I'm going to take my dies and pop them over the top. So ideally, you want to stand directly over your image and just line it up. These ones we've done nice and close to the edge as well. And then we'll take the final one that's a little bit smaller, pop this one over there. There you 
week so it is a little bit easier if you stood directly above i'm working at a slight angle for the camera there we go i'm going to bring in my gemini plates now so to die cut these out i use my base plate my plastic shim my die cut side up and my cutting plate on the top and then let me just grab my machine in so i've got my gemini machine here i'm just going to run those through Again, these dies will fit through your smaller machines as well. Um, you obviously just alter plate combination to suit your machine. There we go. So we'll just grab these at the other side. You can see how perfectly they have cut. I'm going to push these out now. Now what you can find is sometimes with when you die cut an embossed image, a little bit of your embossing powder can crack off. Don't worry about that, it's just because you've stamped and embossed it onto a slightly coated um, paper. So it just doesn't quite bond as well and obviously with the pressure of the die cutting machine it can cause it to lift slightly. So what you can do if you find that's happening is you can lessen the plates in your sandwich. So for example, I don't put my magnetic shim in, I just use my base plate, my plastic shim and my cutting plate on the top. Um, or you can put a little piece of wax paper between your stamped and embossed image and your die or, or a piece of copier paper and it'll just then mean that it's um, protecting the embossing a little bit there. It's just because of the pressure in the die cutting machine. Okay, so what I've then done is I have got the flowers that I've already done and glittered because obviously for the demonstration I needed them to be dry but I'm going to show you how to glitter them up like this. Okay, so there we go. So you can see how pretty that looks. So I'm going to pop that down. I'm going to take in my Art Glitter Dries Clear Glue. I've got my little pin in the top as well. And then all I'm going to do is go in and just glue down the middle of the flower and then pop some little random dots on there as well. Just going to keep rotating the flowers round. And again, just got to be careful that you're not smudging your glue. That's the only thing. go so you can see how we've got the glue on there now and i'll hold this up to show you okay and then i'm going to take my sparklicious glitter and the one that i'm using is crystallina this is the one that i use a lot i do actually tend to keep it in a larger tub and um, just to make it a little bit easier when i'm working with it so we're just going to chuck that glitter over the top like so and then when that dries, this is the effect that you're going to get. So you're going to get the pink shining through and all of that beautiful glitter on there. Okay, so I'm going to pop that down. I'm going to lift this one out of the way. I'm going to start to make up the flowers. So to do this, you are going to take two of your large flowers and you're going to pinch down the middle like this. And what you'll notice with our dies is as well, we've put the extra metal in so they cut to the centre. So it makes it easier for shaping the petals that way. So you're just going to work round like so. Then I'm going to take a little bit of dries clear PVA glue. I'm going to pop that in the middle. I'm going to line the two flowers up together and just stick them down like so that then creates this lovely 3d flower for your project so i'm going to do the next one so we're just going to work around pinching down the center of the flowers Pull those petals up towards the centre, a little bit of glue on the back, 
and then just position this and stick it down like so so you can see how pretty that then looks so we'll do the smaller ones now so exactly the same technique pinch down the center flatten the base one out a little bit bit of glue on the back same with these ones so you're just going to work your way around shaping the flowers like so as well when I've stamped these I'm working on our stamping mat which is brilliant it's like a foam surface that makes it a lot easier for stamping on it's really something that I would recommend investing in so we're going to pull the petals up towards the middle a little blob of glue on the back and then we're going to stick that down in the center like so and i think this is something over the years we have really gotten known for and um, like our sparkly flowers something that i have always loved creating it's just so nice to be able to use all of your pretty papers and obviously use all of your gorgeous glitters as well they just always look so pretty and elegant on your projects too So I'm going to flatten this one down a little bit, blob of glue in the middle. I'm going to pop that down on the top like so. And you can see, whoops, just needs a couple of seconds just to, to grab. You can actually pin them to a foam board as well if you've got an old stamping mat to keep them together but you can see how the flowers are starting to come together really nicely now what i like to do to add that extra little bit of dimension is add an acetate layer on the top and to do this it is so easy to do but it's really going to elevate your crafting so what you need to do is take some heat resistant acetate and because we are stamping and embossing it is really important that the acetate that you are using is heat resistant going to just move these little flowers off to one side give my little matted dust as well seeing as it's got glitter all over there we go it's a bit better so we're going to grab in our acetate we're going to take that anti-static bag again we're going to give this a good dust over like so i'm going to just lift that up and pop that to one side i'm going to grab my stamping so again, I've just left them on the square block as is. I'm going to take my clear embossing ink pad again. And this is the exact same one that I used earlier. This is the Wow Clear Embossing Ink Pad. Okay, we're going to grab in our piece of heat resistant acetate. I'm going to place this down and we're going to press. And on acetate, you want to keep one hand on the block at all times and move the other hand just to keep it still. You're then going to lift that off. Okay. You don't need quite as much pressure on acetate, I tend to find. Because um, if, if you put a little bit too much pressure on, what you can find is the stamp can slip and you get like a double image. But we're going to just take our opaque, bright white, super fine embossing powder again. Okay, pop any excess back into the jar. I'm grab my heat gun in and we're just going to heat these up. You can see I didn't quite put enough pressure on in the middle of that smaller flower there, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. look fab when we get the sequin in the middle and you'll see the acetate turns really quickly okay so there we go so again i like to give it just a couple of seconds to cool before i go in with my glitter and my glue what i tend to do is just roughly cut round like this so you're going to need to do two large one medium and two two small for this one 
then all you're going to do is do that random dotting technique again just all over the petals and trust me it looks a bit random and a bit messy now but when you get your glitter on there and it dries it looks so pretty and elegant This is a nice technique for butterflies wings as well, if you've got any butterfly stamps. There we go. Then we're going to grab in our piece of scrap paper again. And we're going to grab in a sparklicious glitter. And the one I'm using is one of our new ones. It's called Diamond Dazzler, which is a lovely silvery colour, but it's got different flecks of blue in there. It's a really nice iridescent. So I'm going to just chuck this over the top like so, tap away the excess. Then you want to leave those to dry, okay? So pop those to one side and leave them to completely dry. It's always such a challenge getting this glitter back into the pot. <laughs> you always tend to find, what you can do is, if you pop it in, pop it on a hard surface and give it a little it makes it settle and you can sometimes just get that last little bit in there we go okay then so what we're going to do now is take in our paper flowers that we've already made up so just grab those in i'm going to take our gorgeous acetate flowers as well now with the acetate ones you need to cut these out with scissors what you'll find is if you run this through your die cutting machine with the metal die all of the embossing will, will crack and lift off. So use your scissors to cut these out. Because it's on acetate, you only need to do it really roughly. And then you are just going to take your scissors and snip to the middle of the flower. So that's just going to loosen up the petals. So I'm going to just work round, do exactly the same on this one. Again, I've listed all of the products below in the description as well that I'm using. But if you've got anything similar at home, you can, of course, feel free to substitute at any time. So, just working round, cutting these to the centre, like so. Okay, and then what we're going to do is pull the petals up. And you can be quite forceful with the acetate. You don't need to be too careful. You can really force the petals up. And you're going to gather them in the middle, give them a little scrunch, so then they're going to sit nice and 3D. And then we're going to take some glue gel. So I've got a little bit of pin flare here. I'm going to pop a blob of glue on the back. And just place that down in the middle of the flower, like so. So I'm going to do this with all of them now. He's just going to work around, pulling these petals up, give them a little scrunch as well. Little blob of glue on the back. Place that down. Same with the next one. Pull all of those petals up. A little scrunch together, a little blob of glue on the back, place that down and we're just going to keep going doing this. So pulling up these petals, give them a little scrunch, pop a blob of glue on the back. Up. Lop a glue on the back. Just position that down. And that there would be flowers made for this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop those to one side now so we can get on creating the background. So just move those out of the way. 
in. I'm gonna give my little work top a little dust over. Let's get rid of the glitter. Then I've got all of my mats and layers that I've pre-cut down in size. So, I've started with an eight by eight card blank. I've then taken a piece of pink mirror card. This is from our sugared mirror card um, pack. I've taken a piece of crystal white card and I've just cut that down slightly smaller. Um, so the first mat and layer was seven and three quarter inches. The next one's a little bit smaller. The next one is seven and a half inches. So all I want is that very fine white border just to break up the mirror card. But what I've done before I stick this layer down is we're gonna create a little background. So we're gonna take the medium flower to start with. We'll have a smaller block, pop that on there. I'm gonna give my card a little dust with an anti-static bag. Again, you want to always do that just to get rid of any fingerprints or anything that can be on there. Then you're going to take your clear embossing ink pad. You're going to ink up the stamp. Basically, we're just going to randomly stamp this all over the background. So we're going to dot a few of these about. I'm not too fussed about doing the middle. And the reason for that is we're going to cover it up anyway. So don't stress about doing the centre piece too much. One there, and pop one on the corner as well. Okay, so I'm going to grab in my scrap paper again and I'm going to use my opaque bright white super fine embossing powder. Sprinkle that over, you can see I've got a little fingerprint there, so I'll just dust that away. I'm going to grab in my heat gun again and I'm going to heat up the flowers. So all I'm going to do is hold my heat gun still. And I'm going to just run my heat gun over the image like so. And you'll notice when the powder changes because it goes from like a grey colour to the most lovely bright white. What you can do as well if you want to is if you find your fingers are getting a little bit hot holes in the card you can use a wooden peg and then just hold the card with the peg there we go. so just keep going round go. Then I'm going to swap off the medium stamp and take the small flower in. This one here. And because we're just using one smaller stamp, I'm using a smaller acrylic block. If you haven't got our acrylic block set, it is fabulous and I would highly recommend it because it fits all of our stamps. So I'm just going to ink up the smaller flower and then I'm going to just place it down and press. So you just want it randomly in the background and basically all that we're trying to do is create a little bit of interest on the card just something a little bit different creating a bit of a background but you can see how awesome that then looks okay and then what we're going to do is go in with our opaque bright white embossing powder again 
can see where I've just caught a little bit of ink there, but I'll show you how to fix that. Just making sure you've got all the little areas where you've stamped covered in powder. There we go. Back in the jar, we'll get rid of that because we're done with the embossing now. I'm going to take in a dry paintbrush. And I'm just going to where I've got this little extra bit here, just dust that away. And then you'd never know that was there. I'm going to take my heat gun and heat up the flowers. So all I'm doing again is holding that heat gun still. As soon as I see that embossing powder start to melt and change, I'm just moving my heat gun over the image like so. that's created a really pretty background for our card. I'm going to grab in some crystallina glitter and I'm going to take my chisel tip glue pen. I'm going to just drag this along the edge of this piece. So you just want to hold the card still and drag the glue pen towards you. If you hold it at a slight 45 degree angle, you'll find it just drags along the edge of the card nicely. So I'm going to do this on all four sides. And then dunk that in. This is just going to give us this lovely little glittery border. And there we go. You can see that there. Just adding that little bit of sparkle. So we'll start to stick our mats and layers together now. So to do that, again, I'm going to bring my base card in. I'm going to stick my mirror card down. I'm going to use a little bit of halal all-purpose glue to do that. Okay. a little bit of glue on the back it always looks like I'm putting loads on when I pop the collal on but honestly it's not it's only a very small amount I've just popped it on very very thinly so I'm going to place that down onto my base card like so I like using a glue for my mats and layers as well because I am useless at sticking anything on straight <laughs> so the glue gives you that little bit of time to maneuver then we're going to stick our crystal white piece down And go on to there and then we're going to take our piece that we've just stamped and again just pop that on the top and then that's going to go on to there like so Okay, so the next part, I've taken a piece of crystal white card. I'll pop the sizes for my mats and layers in the comments below because I can't quite remember what size I chopped this one down to. I'm going to pop some foam pads on the back of this one. Of course, these are our Easy Lift foam pads, which I absolutely love. They are so, so good. So, so easy to use and they're a nice large size of foam pad as well. Just 
going to take the backs off of this one. Try to do it tidily, it's slowing me down there. <laughs> in the center of the card like so then I'm going to grab in my scrap paper again and I've got a slightly smaller piece of uh, rose quartz pearl card I'm going to take my chisel tip glue pen drag along each edge again like so There we go, and that's just added like a little frosty around the edge of that piece of card. And I'm going to stick this down onto my base. So if my glue's going to come out, there we go. Just drop to the bottom. A little bit of glue just on the back. I always do this when I come to film videos. I think it's because I've been prepping and making cards. I always forget to top my glue up. I'm gonna pop that one onto there. And then next up, I'm gonna take a piece of pink mirror card again. Just gonna pop the foam pad on the back of this one and give it a little bit of lift. Gonna go in the middle of the card as well. Get stuck down there. Of course, if you wanted to, you could be gutting the middle of your mats and layers as well. Then I've got a piece of crystal white card, and I've just cut this down to fit inside. This is our. Let me just check the name on this one. Floral frenzy embossing folder. So this is just a 2D embossing folder. So I put my card into there and I'm just going to run this through my die cutting machine now. So I've just got my machine felt slightly to the side of me here. So that's just going to grab and run through. And when we lift that up, you can see how we've got that beautiful floral pattern embossed into the pearl card. Just looks so, so pretty. So I'll pop that to one side. Again, I'm going to do the little edging with a little bit of glitter because I do love that technique. Do it all the time on all of my projects. So you're literally just taking the glue pen and you're just dragging it along each side. in the bin i'm going to grab my glue in again see if we can get a little bit out just for this last project there we go with my last little mat and layer bit of glue all over the back of there and then we're just going to take our card base in get that mat lined up a little bit so you can see a little bit better and I'm going to stick that down just in the middle like so so you can see that's how my mats and layers have come together so I'm going to start to arrange the flowers now so to do that I always like to use a little bit of 3d glue gel so I'm going to start with this one here that's in the middle first and then we're going to take the bigger ones pop one either side And again, using the glue gel means that you can manoeuvre the flowers and manipulate them to where you want them to be, which I always think is really nice. Pop that one there. 
And then I've taken, this is one of our older Stampin' Die sets. It's called uh, Sentiment Borders. And it's like a little banner set where you can do like your happy birthday or whatever. So I'm going to take that and pop a couple of blobs of glue on the back of there. That's going to go across the centre of my card like so. It looks a bit full on pink at the minute, but trust me, when we get the foliage added in, it's going to transform it. So what I've done is I've taken two pieces of foliage from my little box. So basically what I do is I do a load of stamping and embossing of foliage, colour it in and chuck it all in a box ready to use. So this one is from the summer foliage set. But what I'm going to do is snip just the leaves off like so. So this is from the summer foliage stamp and die set. And to glitter this, I've used our new Lime Zing Sparklicious Glitter. And literally just gone in with my dries clear glue, infilled the leaves. And then I'm just going to snip them out like so. And then I'm going to grab my Kalal, uh, not Kalal, sorry, Pin Flare Glue Gel. Squeeze that up, a little bit of glue just on the edge. Then we're going to just take these leaves and just start to tuck them in behind the flower. And you can see instantly that foliage elevates the project. So you can just add these little pieces in like so. And you can add as many or as few as you like as well. I've done two stems here, so it's like eight leaves worth in effect. Like so. So you can see how that's then made that part up. What I've then got is some little of our sequins. Let me grab these. To show you. So these are from our floral mix sequin bag, which looks like this. There we go. So I've just grabbed five of the large orange ones. And we're going to just pop those in the middle of the flowers. I just use a little blob of glue gel. To stick these down. Like so, and then what you can do as an optional extra if you want to is in the pink sequin mix bag, there's some really nice like little, almost like little five petal flowers, this one here. So I took five of those, two, three, four, five, and you can literally see like you were getting so many sequins in these bags. They're going to keep you going for a long time, definitely. Let's take back away. So what I did with these is I took the little flower and I popped a pink jewel from our new um, self-adhesive sparkles. Popped that into the centre. Like so tiny little blob of glue on the back and then bob that in the middle of the flower but they just look really really pretty and it adds such a lovely finish to your project so you can just go in add the little jewel into the center it's a little bit fiddly but it's absolutely worth it and then you can just take these tiny little blob of glue on the back and just pop that down in the middle of the flower and it just gives like a three-dimensional center to the flowers which I absolutely love I think it looks so pretty it's almost like fruit salad the sweets the colors of this one isn't it in the oranges and the pinks so so pretty 
Then what I've done is I've taken a little sheet of glue dots and I've stuck some of those sequins on there. So then you can just use them as like little self-adhesive emb embellishments just to dot around in the background, like so. Totally recommend glue dots for this. I use glue dots so, so much in my projects. And they're such an underrated little adhesive, so useful. But you can see how you can just dot these lovely little sequins all around in the background. I'm just gonna put them there. And then if you want, you can of course take some out of the little pink bag. I'm gonna pop them in this little plastic box so I can sprinkle them out and get the ones that I want. And you can stick them with your um, PVA glue as well. They do stick down with that. So you can always just go in if you want to, of course. Should have put my pin in my glue. There we go. <laughs> and you can just add little blobs. of PVA into the background like so. And then you can take the little jewels and pop them over the top. When the glue dries clear, it looks a lot better um, than it will when you first stick them on. Cause you get the colors shining through from underneath, but it just adds a really pretty little finish to your projects. And I like dotting a couple on the leaves as well. I always think that looks really nice. But you can just, you can really go to town or you can leave it as plain as you like. And then what I would probably do just to finish this one off is I would take some of our little self-adhesive jewels. I'm going to go with the lighter pink ones and just pop three in the corners. You don't have to do this. It's a little optional extra, but these little jewels are absolutely gorgeous. They really, really do sparkle. And I do like these because you get like a nice little variety of sizes as well, which I always think looks nice. But you can see there, that would then be your finished project. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, you can shop all of the products that I've used today online at www chloescreativecards.co.uk All the items that I've used are linked in the description below as well. Hope to see you again soon. Bye!